I'll be the first one to tell you that there's a lot of junk out there when it comes to Photoshop and Lightroom plugins, and there's a lot of companies looking to make a quick buck off of features that are not really necessary and not really needed. In today's video, though, we're gonna talk about literally, I think, the only number one plugin that I think that you need. I've been using this for years, uh, and it's a staple in my workflow as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. It works seamlessly in both, and I'm gonna show you how to use it in today's video, and then kind of just show you a little review, and then show you why I think you should pick up this software. Now, the software we are gonna be discussing in today's video, maybe you've heard of it, it is DxO's Nick Collection. There's a whole suite of really nice apps in the Nick Collection, but specifically today, we are gonna talk about color effects, which is just amazing for any kind of color or even black and white photographer. But I'm gonna show you examples in today's video that are wildlife, portrait, and landscape, and show you how to really refine those images and to create looks that you otherwise wouldn't be able to create within Lightroom or even Photoshop. Let's go jump right on in there into Lightroom. First image we're gonna look at is this bison photo here, this nice wildlife shot. Now, I've already edited um, this image. Now, the nice thing about this plugin that I'm gonna show you, it can be used at any point in time during the edit. If you wanna use it on the raw file, you can, but I usually recommend doing a few preliminary edits here. Uh, if I'm gonna use it in Photoshop, I'll load it as a smart object and then open it directly from there. That gives you um, non-destructive edits. You can go back and edit it later, but in Lightroom, it just simply creates a new uh, photo, a new copy of the photo basically with those adjustments. So once you have the software installed, um, if you're someone who already has it, this will be perfect because it'll show you how to use it. If you're someone that's thinking about getting it, this will show you how it works once you buy it. Uh, you go down to your photo here. So I'm going to click on this photo, uh, right click, and then I'm going to click on edit in. And we're going to go down. Like I said, we're going to be using the Nick 8 color effects today. Um, within the Nick collection is all of these included, everything under Nick 8. Um, and there's lots of great stuff in here, but color effects is really one of the cool ones that I think um, is pretty unique. Then you can edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments and click edit. It's going to take just a second to prepare your file for editing. Then you're gonna be met with this box. So the nice thing, uh, you can see Lightroom is still open in the background. Um, so this just opens as like a little pop-up window that you can then go in and make adjustments to and then hit apply and it goes, sends it right back to Lightroom. Super seamless. Same thing with Photoshop. It'll send it right back into Photoshop. Now on this particular photo, there's a few things that I want to show off. Um, but let's talk about kind of the layout first before we get into the features. So when it comes to the layout, there's a lot of things going on. You know, you have histograms, um, other things like that. I don't really worry about all that. I'm really just, just want the special effects. I want to simplify it as much as possible. Um, so over on the left side is where you're going to find those filters. You can see last edits. Um, as you can see, I've been using this for quite some time. These are just the last 15 edits that I've made within the last couple months here. Um, but within these last edits, you know, if you're doing something over and over and over again, you can just click and it'll automatically apply any adjustments that you made on those last edits, those last photos that you edited. Um, but for the sake of this video, we're going to start fresh. Now you have a couple different compare views, um, and we'll talk about that once I kind of get an effect on here so you can see exactly what it's looking like. Now when you go to all Nick, you can go ahead and hit filters. That will open up the filters. Right now I'm just showing favorites, but here is all of the filters that you get just within the Nick color effects here. Uh, and I've starred, you can see I can just click a little star and I've like I've favorited all of the ones that I really like. So then I can hit favorites and then they just all open up right here. So they're really, really easy to grab. Now on this photo in particular, uh, and wildlife photos in general, there's a couple that I go back to a lot. You can of course um, go here, you know, you can click wildlife if you wanted. I just like to do um, all Nick and then just do favorites. So the first thing I want to apply to this is Glamour Glow. Now in older versions, maybe you've used the really old version of the Nick collection. You can only really apply one filter at a time. In the new version, you can apply multiple, which is really, really nice. Um, and when I say new version, this has been around for a couple of years, but I remember maybe like back in 2016, you're only able to apply one at once. So it's nice because I can apply multiple of these filters um, on top of each other all in one effect. Um, so let's go back to that glamour glow right here. As you can, you can see, the filters appear on the right as you apply them, um, and you can see what they do. Now this just loads in by default, so the glamour glow kind of just softens things out a little bit. Um, so a lot of times I like to increase the glow a little bit, and maybe I'll warm up the glow in this particular photo. Um, and you can play with the saturation here as well. Um, you can protect the shadows or the highlights with these sliders and you can kind of just fine tune that. So you can see that really easy glow. That's not something that you could replicate 
uh, in Lightroom, and you could definitely replicate it in Photoshop, but it's gonna be pretty step heavy, whereas this is just one filter, slap it right on top, super, super easy to use, just like that. Uh, that's the Glamour Glow. That's a nice effect for wildlife and for portraits. Uh, maybe not so much for landscapes, but definitely for wildlife and portraits. Now, other one that I like, and I use this one for tons of my photos, is this Darken slash Lighten Center. So this darkens the outside, like applies a little vignette, and it brightens the center. I think it's a way better way to apply a vignette. You can adjust this uh, to get the correct darkness, and then you can increase the brightness in the center of your photo. And then you can adjust the size of the center. You can place the center, you know, if you wanted the center to be over here, you wouldn't in this photo, you'd want it to be right on his face. Um, you can see that helps to kind of bring the eye to the center of the photo. This is something you could do in Lightroom or you could do in Photoshop, but it's going to be pretty step heavy again, super easy to just apply it just like that here. Now, the other one that I like uh, is called polarization and there's definitely no way to polarize an image that hasn't been polarized in the field, but this is basically as close as you can get. So it's going to bring out some colors on some spots that maybe are bright, overexposed, or just places like this where there's a little bit of glare, like right on the nose. So I can increase the strength, and you can see how this just kind of brings out the colors in my image. Uh, and this is a way better than doing saturation or vibrance. This is something that I'm doing on, on a good amount of my images of all sorts. You can see it just kind of polarizes the scene just a little bit, makes those colors a little bit better. That's really all I would do to this photo. Um, we're gonna get into some of the masking adjustments in a little bit later in this video. But before we leave this photo, let's talk about just these compare views here. So you have this original view. If you wanna see the before and after, you just press and hold before and after. Uh, if you want a little slider bar, you click on this option here and then you can slide. You can see on the left is before, on the right is after. You can see how it's working. You can also hit this button if you prefer up and down rather than side to side. And then you can hit this if you want to see um, the before image and then the after image right next to each other. I like this view in most case scenarios. Now, if you want those non-destructive edits as well, you can check this box when you save it and then save it back to Lightroom. I'm not gonna do that, but if you did do that, it would make it so that you could load this back up and adjust these settings rather than having to start completely fresh. But I'm just gonna hit apply. You can see it really quickly processes the image and then I'm right back into Lightroom. I didn't speed that up at all. That's exactly how quickly it happened. You can see before and after. Just those simple changes, really, really easy. Well, let's get into a landscape photo here. I wanna talk about a few little different things that I like to do with my landscapes and show you why if you're a landscape photographer, this might be helpful for you. Um, so this photo doesn't have any adjustments on it and I'm okay with that. I'm happy with where the photo is at right now. It's actually an HDR image um, and so I think it's already looking pretty good. So let's go in, we'll do edit in again, and then we'll go to color effects, and then we're gonna hit edit. It's gonna take just a second to load in for us there. Um, again, you can see how quickly that loads. These are 60 megapixel files, so um, this software is really, really snappy. All right, now on this one, there's a few different things that I wanna do. So I'm gonna use both the skylight filter and the sunlight. Uh, the skylight filter is a nice way. It just adds a little bit of warm light into kind of the whole image, but it definitely adds it more into the highlights. So we can do something like that, maybe. Uh, maybe a little bit less. And then we can go ahead and hit sunlight. That's This is another one of my favorite ones. Um, this one just kind of softens the whole image. It's really nice when you have some glow in the photo to add this in. Um, you can adjust the strength of the light. Usually you wanna keep this pretty low. You can adjust the temperature of the light if you want it to be warm or cool. I usually like it somewhere in the middle. Um, you can adjust the brightness. I want it to be a little bit darker. And then you can fix up the contrast how you like it as well. You know, somewhere kind of in there that just kind of softens the image a little bit more. I'm gonna decrease the brightness, just like that. Really like that effect for a nice soft look on the whole photo. Now, one thing that I do find really useful here, um, a lot of times I don't really like what this is doing in the shadows. And so you can use the masking tools here, which are available on any of these adjustments, really helpful to use. Um, and you've got a few options, you know, color range, um, luminance range, or luminosity masking basically. You can even draw a, um, like this is kind of cool, you can, if you wanna draw like a certain area, just like that for masking. Um, you have this tool here, which allows you to do gradient, and then you have this tool here, um, which creates a radial gradient. The other one was a linear gradient. 
Um, but for this image, I'm actually going to use luminosity masking. So you click the luminosity masking button and then you just click on the image. So I'm going to click on the brights here just like that. Now you have a few options here. You can go down, make some adjustments if you need. You can expand the area that this is gonna hit, uh, which I will probably do on this image, just like that. Now, when I toggle this mask, you can see this is now just affecting the brights in the image, not the darks. So it's really helpful to be able to use these masking tools. Certainly not a requirement, but if you're someone who knows how to use masking tools, you can definitely get a little bit more power out of the software by using these masking tools. But if you don't know how to use them, don't worry because you're still going to get really great results here with the software. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Now there's two more effects that I want to apply here. One is tonal contrast. This one is really popular amongst landscape photographers. I know a lot of people that do this. I like to zero out all the numbers before I get started here. Now the tonal contrast adds contrast to the tones in the image. So you can see like this is affecting the brightest parts of the photo. We've got the mid-tones um, and then we've got the shadows. Typically what I like to do is actually remove contrast from the shadows. I like those to be a little less punchy. And then sometimes the mid-tones, you know, I go both ways, but a lot of times I'll remove as well. And then highlights, if you want to increase them, you definitely can. So this just adds more contrast in the highlights, less in the mid-tones and shadows. Um, and so I think this creates a really unique effect that I it's really not that easy to replicate any other way other than having some kind of a plugin that does this tonal contrast. Now, last but not least, for landscape photographers, uh, one filter that you really might like is called the Detail Extractor here. I'm going to hit that plus and load that out. What this does is it brings back the detail in um, the whole image. A lot of times this is like in really dark areas like that. It's a little overcooked uh, in this particular image, but I can reduce this just a little bit. You know, you can add contrast. So a lot of times I'll increase the detail extractor and then also increase the contrast and just adjust this around. You know, something like right in there, you can see as I zoom in, if I do a before and after, I've, I've gotten back a little bit of that detail there. And you can, of course, adjust the intensity of that as you see fit. But on this image, let's look at the before and the after. Before and the after. So I made that sky pop really nicely. Um, super, super easy to do. Again, hit apply. That loads right back into Lightroom. You can continue editing. You can be done editing. Um, whatever you want to do, it just loads straight back into Lightroom. Super, super easy to use. All right, another image, a portrait here. Uh, I'm not a huge portrait guy. This is my wife. I took photos of her because I have that camera equipment, but I'm not going to act like I'm an expert when it comes to portraits. But I do know just having played around in the color effects, there's a couple things that are really, really nice for portrait photographers. Um, and I've even used some of it on my portraits. But again, I'm not a huge expert. But let me show you how that works. Um, so for this one, I'm actually going to go to portrait here and you can see all of the filters that they recommend for portrait. Now, probably one of the biggest ones is this dynamic skin softener. This is something until I started taking portraits, that I didn't even realize was a big deal. Um, I'm hitting command plus to zoom in there, by the way. So I'm going to zoom into the face of my model here. And what this does is it softens the skin tones. I'll show you how this works. Um, so you're going to hit this button, this eyedropper, and then select the skin like a, an average color on your model just like that. So it's going to select the color of her skin. Now, um, you can increase or decrease the color reach. Usually around 30% is good. And then you can just increase the slider. So let's just increase this all the way so you can see it apply really easily. So you can see it just softens the tones on the face. Now it's doing too much because it's it's grabbing the hair as well. Um, and But let's lower this down to something more reasonable. And there's soft or small, medium, and large details before, after before, after. So it just kind of softens some of the really bright spots on the face. Um, if you've got a model that needs like their face cleaned up a little bit because maybe there's um, like some acne spots or anything like that or just rough edges around the face, this is perfect for cleaning that up. This is so easy to use, not easy to replicate, but that's how you use that dynamic skin softener. Now there's a few other filters that are really nice here um, for portrait photographers. One of the ones that I think is pretty cool is this classical soft focus. Um, and again, I'm not a huge portrait photographer, but this gives you that kind of vintage soft focus look, um, and you can adjust kind of which one you want, but I will show you the kind of the before and after, because like when I saw this, I was thinking, I don't even understand what classical soft focus is, 
but when you kind of play around with it, you get this just, it's like literally just a nice soft focus. I know it's like confusing to use that as the definition, but before and after, before and after, just kind of brightens things up, makes it a little more airy, a little more happy toned, a little less contrasty. So I like that a lot. Now, of course, there's other filters in here um, that you can use. You know, if you want a film effect to your photos, you can do that in here as well. Um, if you want, you know, vintage, um, film grain, all sorts of different good stuff in here to kind of tone your images and make them look nice. I'm not huge into the effects like all of these things. Um, I like my photos to look pretty like true to life, but I know there is a lot of you guys out there that definitely like doing stuff like this to kind of just tone your images a certain way. So that is an option as well. Um, for those of you that like to do portraits, of course, there's also some black and white options as well, which we will talk about on the next image. All right, so I'm not big on black and white myself, but I know there is a lot of people that are. You have a nice black and white conversion um, in here that you can use and make adjustments. Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about black and white, but there is some great options here in terms of what you can do with your images if you want to do black and white. Um, but let's get into kind of what I normally would use for this image. So the first thing that I think might look nice is kind of something called low key. So this low key filter just makes it, it almost like adds mood to the image, makes it really moody. So what I want to do here um, is just make a few adjustments, maybe lower the standard low key, bring up the shadows a little bit, highlights up, whites, uh, contrast at 100 is fine. You know, just, just kind of play with these sliders. You can see how quickly you can make effects happen before and after. This just kind of makes things a little more moody, a little more contrasty. Um, so I really like that low key effect for those moody images. This works on like portraits and wildlife as well that look moody. Uh, this just happened to be the most moody photo that I had in my catalog that was easy to access. Now, another one that I love for landscapes, Pro Contrast here. This one is fantastic. A lot of people look at it and think, oh, it's just contrast, but it does a lot more. The first thing that it does is correct the color cast in your image. Uh, this can be really helpful if you're someone that struggles with white balance in your photos. As I slide this up, you'll see that it kind of corrects those deep blues and it makes my image more of a neutral tone. Now, I like having this a little bit blue toned, but as I slide this up, I'm realizing it's a little bit overdone. So maybe I'll leave this at about 50% just like that. I'll also correct the contrast as well. A lot of times this will add contrast and then dynamic contrast. Basically, it, I don't know exactly what it does, but it seems to add contrast um, while maintaining that nice detail without totally destroying those blacks. So pro contrast, really nice to have. Now we've got polarization as well. We're going to use that one again um, because it worked well earlier. You can see this kind of just pulls some color back into the scene. One thing you might notice, you know, I don't really like what it's doing to the sky, but I like what it's doing to these rocks in this lake down here. Perfect. No problem. We can go ahead and use control line here, which is the equivalent of our linear gradient. Um, bring that in just like that. And now you can see polarization is just affecting the foreground. So, so easy to use. Um, really, really nice to have that. Now let's kind of wrap things up. We've used this dark and light and center before. We'll use it again on this image. One thing I didn't talk about in the previous image, if you want to adjust the shape, you certainly can. I usually like it on at number one though, but we're going to bring that center luminosity up, border luminosity down, increase the center size. Maybe the border luminosity needs to come down a little bit as well just like that, bring the center luminosity down, just like that, kind of bring it home. Uh, let's look at the before and the after, super quick and easy edit. Now I really only scratch the surface on what's available there in that color effects. And again, the color effects is just one part of that whole package. So there is a lot more stuff that comes with it. Uh, I definitely recommend getting this software, trying it out, hitting that little star button to favorite all the effects that you like. And I think it's well worth the money. I do think it's like one of the only must have um, plugins for Lightroom or for Photoshop, because I think it is going to help you so much to create those really, really great images. Um, I'll include a link down below where you can pick this up. Make sure that you guys use that link. My name is Austin James Jackson. I do appreciate you guys for checking out this week's video. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.